In the spring of 2023, Bureau of Land Management fire crews burned juniper trees, cut in 2021, to restore the sage step landscape in the giant expanse of Owyhee County in southwest Idaho. The spring burning projects are a key part of the Bruno Owyhee Sage Grouse Habitat Project, known as BOSH for short, a collaborative partnership of state and federal agencies, wildlife advocacy groups, and private landowners seek to restore the native upland landscapes to a more natural condition, benefiting sage grouse, songbirds, antelope, spotted frogs, and other wildlife. The Bosch project is unprecedented in scope and scale. 30,000 acres of state and federal lands are being treated per year to halt juniper encroachment. In the sixth year of the project, 140,000 acres have been treated so far. New scientific research has shown that conifer encroachment is the number two threat to sagebrush ecosystems, just behind the threat of invasive annual plants like cheatgrass. When junipers take over the landscape, other native plants suffer, studies show. Pre-treatment, lost production of herbaceous production peaked at 14,030 tons in 2016. Over the last 30 years, 104,742 tons of herbaceous production have been lost to juniper encroachment in the Bosch project area. However, the land bounces back quickly following treatments. An increase of 5,000 tons of herbaceous production occurs per year. We've been taking uh, a lot of photo points um, post-treatment and we have uh, a number of spots set up um, focusing on areas that uh, had some significant habitat values such as springs, seeps, riparian areas, things like that where we want to document some of those changes. Trees are removed and then all of a sudden these old seeps come back to life, which is a fantastic benefit for wildlife. Um, not just grouse, but big game and uh, Columbia spotted frogs and a whole bunch of other critters. Treatment plans are strategic. All of the juniper cutting units are within 10 kilometers of 70 sage grouse leks in the 617,000 acre project area. The value of improving sage step habitat for sage grouse and other critters inspired the Bosch team to go big. The Bosch project uh, stands to be the largest single restoration effort um, we've ever undertaken in the sagebrush biome. Uh, just to put this into context, it's probably about five to six times larger than any uh, similar effort that we've undertaken uh, to address this conifer expansion issue. When um, we take that kind of bird's eye view of the whole biome, this southwest portion of Idaho and the Bosch project, which focuses on that uh, particular area, is bullseye ground zero for some of the best remaining intact sagebrush ecosystems that we have. Juniper trees have been encroaching on the sage step landscape for decades, crowding out native vegetation, drying up seeps and springs, and sapping the productivity of the land. It really just essentially outcompetes all other all other vegetation. They do utilize the water if it's available, but the juniper uh, will eventually win. University of Montana scientists matched aerial photography from 1950 with present day in the Owyhees, showing the spread of junipers on the landscape. Connor White explains. Juniper is a native, a native tree. It belongs out here on this landscape. It's just through through our own actions since we settled the West, uh, namely fire suppression, is it has just had an unbelievable increase in, in, in its density on the landscape, you know, anywhere from 125 to 625% increase in the amount of conifer and juniper across the, as, across the West as a whole. So we're mimicking fire by utilizing mechanical cutting. In the Warner Mountains of Eastern Oregon, following juniper removal, researchers documented a 12% increase in sage grouse populations. High quality habitat increased by six times. A similar response is expected in the Owyhees. For the first time ever, 
documented a population level response from sage grouse to restoration actions. A strong partnership of 10 state and federal agencies, wildlife conservation groups and ranchers are working together to support the project. Treatments transcend land management boundaries using the all hands, all lands approach. The partners collectively fund the project at a cost of one to two million dollars per year. To oversee the project, project partners hired Connor White to coordinate activities. White is an avid hunter and wildlife professional for Pheasants Forever. Conifer control projects initially started in 2010 on private lands in the West with funding from NRCS Working Lands for Wildlife. The projects benefited sage grouse and livestock. In 2013, the Life on the Range crew did a video documentary on a project in the Owyhees featuring ranchers and Art Talzma from the Nature Conservancy. They look for sage and bitter brush like we have here in the background, and that's where they hide their nest. But they will not select the site at all if there's a tall juniper tree there. And so as a juniper encroaches a meadow, they have to vacate it. I mean, they flat out won't stay there. The control method? Contractors used masticators to grind up juniper trees. That worked well at a small scale. Ranchers liked how native grasses remounted after treatments. It's a big help because it not only brings up the water table for one thing, because when you kill a juniper tree, you're definitely taking something that is wicking all the moisture out of the sagebrush as well as the forbs, grasses, everything else. It's a, so it's a win-win situation. It's more forage for the cows. It's better wildlife habitat for all wildlife. Nearby here, we surveyed a site that had over 200 birds on it in the fall of the year. And that's about by the crow fly, just three or four miles from here. So we know once we open it up, we'll get the bird use back. Over the last decade, NRCS has worked with more than 2,000 landowners across the West to improve sage grouse habitat on 700,000 acres of land. Today, conifer treatment projects are being done at a much larger scale on public lands as well as private lands. Let's take a tour with Connor White to see how it's done at a landscape scale. To treat 30,000 acres per year in the Owyhees, crews worked year-round to stay on course. Junipers dry out, BLM crews fan out to burn down trees cut in the previous 18 months. The timing is crucial, so the dead junipers burn, but the sagebrush doesn't. Conditions today are ideal. Yeah, we've got about 60 degrees, some, a light breeze and, you know, relative humidity that's right where we want it. Um, so the, the brush is not receptive to fire, but the, the fuel, the target fuels are. So today's ideal conditions. The burning activity invigorates the soil and accelerates the return of native grasses to the landscape. So this is stuff we cut in 2019 and then jackpot burned in the spring of 21. So it's had two, two years since we did jackpot burning. And you can see it's already starting to grass in. We've got some blue bunch wheat grass there, some Sandberg's bluegrass, and some Idaho fescue, along with some assorted forbs. The new regrowth benefits the land and many species of wildlife. In the summer, chainsaw crews move into the country to cut junipers. Hiking through the sagebrush, the crew drops juniper trees as they go. Yeah, right now, as of today, we've got about 50 chainsaws running between the BLM cutting and the stuff on the private. So they're pretty well dialed in at this point in the year and everything's looking really good. Each member of the crew packs water bottles, chainsaw fuel, bar chain oil, and blade sharpeners so they can stay on the move. Crew boss Juan Salazar Sanchez says they enjoy the work. Yeah, I like it. How come? I've been doing this all my life, so. How many acres do you guys cover in a day, do you know? All depends. Yeah? All depends how many trees you have an acre. Sometimes we do one acre an hour, sometimes a point, 25 acres and eight hours, seven hours. Yeah, we do a small unit back by Oriana. 
was only nine acres, nine acres. It takes 180 hours to get it done. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was so many. The crew, based in Bend, Oregon, works seven and a half hours a day and camps overnight near cutting units to stay close to the job. They make 22 to $23 an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Good, he paid the bills. White works with the crews to make sure they meet the proper standards for dropping and limbing trees so predators can't perch on the limbs. Yep, we try to be out here at least a couple times a week. Um, we've yeah, invested a lot of staff time in making sure that everything's looking the way it should. They need to follow the contract specifications and that's on us to make sure that they're doing that. One important aspect, crews are trained how to identify old growth juniper trees which are left in place. One of the things that um, when we're doing the, the cutting here on a, on a landscape level is uh, we don't want to uh, be cutting any of the old growth. That's one of the, uh, the uh, treatment parameters uh, is to cut the younger trees uh, and then leave the old growth. White and Okison educate crews to look at the tree's shape, bark, lichen, and location to determine if it's an old growth tree. You know, size really doesn't have anything to do with it. Um, it's all about that characteristics uh, and having all those together present on a tree that we would call it an old growth tree. When things cool off in the fall, the BLM burns junipers under the right weather conditions to remove trees and eliminate the fire hazard. A heavy equipment operator stacks the trees into large piles next to public roads, and BLM crews burn the piles. They do this in the winter, too. White explains it's important to remove the fuel hazards next to public roads in the Owyhees because during the hot summer months, a wildfire could break out and those roads would be used as fire breaks. They do the jackpot burns 200 feet on either side of the roads. So if we come in under you know, conditions like, like we've got today and do some burning, uh, we just set them up to have a much greater chance of success when that wildfire occurs. Just managing the fuel break, essentially, just managing, managing the fuels. Ranchers are supportive of the project as well. Chuck Hall treated his mountain property in the Owyhees. Places like that don't come up very often. Uh, I uh, had at least for probably you know, 20 years prior before I owned it. And in 07, I was able to buy it and, uh, from the widow lady that owned it. And, and uh, I've never regretted a second of it. It's been, a, been my uh, happy place to go. The value as a um, peace of mind, probably uh, raise cattle, just enjoy life mostly. You know, I'm getting up in years and uh, just enjoy life is my plan for now. But, but uh, I've really enjoyed that place. It's always 10 degrees cooler up there than it is here in the valley. Hall sees a lot of sage grouse on his land. My place there, where he, that was the chicken capital of the whole country. Because in uh, long in July and August, they'd flock in there on the creek and the water. They hang around the house even. Hall treated junipers on his property three to four years ago and liked the results. I uh, cut probably 75 or more trees, big trees down, and it was Within a week, 10 days, the spring came back. It always ran, but it ran twice as much or more than it did. Those trees sucked up a lot of water, and uh, it made a big difference. Hall sees a lot of benefits for ranchers and wildlife. That's a godsend to us cowboys. We're going to have more water, we're going to have more grass. It's going to take some time, but it, I'm quite certain it's worth it. Connor White is happy with the results so far. He peers off in the distance, looking into the vast open spaces of the Owyhees with South Mountain off in the distance. So since sage grouse are a landscape level species, we have to design uh, conifer treatments that, that are also at the landscape scale. So everything you see behind me from about here to there uh, was treated either in 2020 or just last year in 2022 thousands and thousands of acres so we, we like to we like to call it in our shop horizon to horizon we've learned over time that it's much more effective to go to where grouse still remain and then kind of grow those core areas uh, through this restoration practice and so yeah we're, we're seeing an immediate response in a lot of our projects where grouse will show up 
literally following the equipment as we remove trees from the landscape. And so it's like instant habitat uh, creation. We're thrilled with the results. The scale at which um, these acres are being improved is, is nothing that's been done before um, out in this country. So it's been really neat to see all the partners coming together and tackle this issue of encroaching conifer. It's been awesome to see. For more information, go to www.partnersinthesage.com forward slash Bosch dash story map. If you are interested in obtaining juniper firewood in the field, you can do so with a BLM permit. Contact the BLM Owyhee Field Office in Marsing or the BLM Boise District to obtain a firewood permit.